For a mouth, I've got kind of a basic mouth shape here. And the upper shape, the upper lip is always going to be a triangle with the top of the triangle peeking out at the middle of the nose. So this will be fairly straight up and down um, compared to the rest of the face. And then this is going to be like triangular. And your lower lip is usually going to be a half circle or kind of a crescent shape. So once you've got your mouth muscles shaped right, you're then going to go in and actually start doing the primary contour of your lip shape, which is going to be where the pink is on your lip. And a lot of getting that shape right is you're going to want to think about creating a shadow where the edge is. And you can see how by doing that, here I have this nice sharp shadow under here. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side to where I'm starting to get this nice sharp shadow underneath. And once I've got that shadow, I can then think about, well, what is that shape? So your shape may be very straight across, all right? Your shape may be arced up from the corners of the lip. Your shape may be so that it comes down and then it comes back up to where you have, see how we've got this kind of bow shape? So it's kind of like that kind of shape across the top of the lip. It could be that once you have your peak that the shape drops down and has a convex shape. So you've got to figure out what that shape is first. Is it convex? Is it, conca um, is it convex? Is it concave? Is it like a double bow? Or is it very straight? Does that make sense? So once I've figured out what that shape is, then I'm going to go through and duplicate it here. So if it's convex and then comes back in, so that's the bow shape, you're going to take the tool or take your finger, you can take the back side of the tool and use it to push it up and use your tool to push that down so that now I've got this nice pretty bow shape. If it's convex all the way across, you can use the back of your finger now or you can use the arc of the tool and now that shape is more or less convex all the way across and I want to really think about that shadow all the way across or is it very straight so you have this little you'll have this little what my uh, instructor used to call a parrot beak down the center that some people's are bigger than others so now this person's is very straight really make sure that you get that shape right push it down a little bit more and we have that convex shape. So I'm going to make it a little bit more convex. How kind much of... clay do you think on average you add to the face when you're adding skin? Like how thick? So for adding skin, it may be paper thin. In some cases, it may be that you don't add any at all. That like on the forehead, you may just blend the muscles in. Really? Um, it depends upon where on your face. And that's where you've got to really look at your pictures, look at the model. And, you know, like in your cheeks, you may have quite a bit of fat underneath the skin, so you could add as much as a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to make this mouth so it has two different shapes as opposed to one. So there's a straighter shape, and there's the, this is the bow shape. So once you've gotten that done, I'm fixing to make a little dent in his face, then you're actually going to put the fat onto your lips. Can you do it? And generally, you're going to take and roll up some little balls for the fat and, and the uh, any time you have fat, well any shape on the body is going to be convex as a general rule. So if you've got fat, especially fat nodules tend to be these little round balls and I'll anchor these guys down and into place kind of touch them against each other. And this side is a narrower lip, so I'm going to use a narrower upper lip shape. Now, once I've anchored those little shapes into place, you're going to take your tool and just real gently blend them up to the upper lip shape and really keep track of where that edge is, where the two are going to, where the fat, the roundness of the fat is going to meet, okay? 
and keep that edge. So and that is really the biggest secret is making sure that you keep that edge when you're making that upper lip. And it is easiest usually to do the upper lip first and the bottom lip second. But sometimes, especially like on a larger mouth like this, you may need to add a little bit of clay down into the corners. And sometimes you can't get that clay placed by using the tool. And so you can put a little bit of clay onto the back of the tool and then put it into place. All right? Now here's the thing that is important. Shadow. Always see how there's that little bit of a shadow, oops, little bit of a shadow created by the undercut of the lip coming down. So the lip's going to come out, and then it's going to cut under, and there's a little shadow right there that creates and shows me where the outside edge of my lip is. Okay? Does that make sense? So same thing on the other side. Now there is a temptation, and this is a beginner's temptation. So I'm going to show you this, but do not do it. I'll knock you for it. There's a temptation to put a, uh, an outline on the lip. And um, the biggest thing to remember is that when you look at it from the profile, the lip's going to come out, and then it's going to cut under. And it's that undercut that's going to create the, the shadow that's the primary contour of that outer lip. Does that make sense? Okay. So the uh, shadow is going to be created by here's the upper lip and there's an undercut. So the undercut creates the shadow, which creates the shape of the lip. So really, really important to think about here to the shadow, just like I was talking about with the eyes. The shadows are one of the things that are the most important thing to think about. Okay. So then once you've got your upper lip shaped the way you want, and remember, I'm doing two different lip shapes here. Thank you. And if you think it with your hand, you know, don't worry about it. It's just clay. You can put it right back. All right? So shadow's created. Then you're going to do your lower lip. And there's a couple of different ways to deal with the lower lip. You, again, want to think about, well, what is that shape on the lower lip? You know, very common is, and this is exaggerated because these are very large lips, very common is for your lips to kind of come down at an angle and then box over straight and then come back at an angle. Another thing that's really common is for your lips to stay rounded all the way through so you have this really, really gentle round arc all the way through the bottom. All right, so that's shape number two. The third shape is for them to be rounded but there to be a lift or an indentation right in the bottom lip. So almost like the indentation on the top lip, but not quite as extreme. You know, that's really common. So once you've figured out what that shape is, you're then going to do the same thing for the bottom lip as you did for the top lip. All right? Where you're going to very gently roll in. And most people, it, you're going to have two major balls in the center. as far as shape wise and then especially if you have the straight across or the bowed out lip sometimes you'll have a third one kind of in between the two to make that bottom lip shape because you sometimes will have a little depression right in there and then you're going to want to gently use your tool to blend it in and push it into place a little large. Okay, and be conscious, again, just like with the upper lip, if your tool is cleaner, you see how the tool wasn't very clean, and now it's starting to crumb up. If I wipe the tool off, now it's starting to go clean. So be really conscious of that shadow again. And if you can create that shadow with the edge, So it's kind of the same thing as it was last time where I'm coming around and I'm creating the shadow, but instead of creating it up here and going under, I'm creating it by the lower lip is going to come back. Okay? The last thing to do when you've got, after you've got your lip shape right, 
but sometimes it's helpful to take and put the arc and cut the spot between the lips. Just figure out where do the corners of my mouth meet. So at the moment, this one is set so that the upper lip is going out farther than the lower lip. It may be that your upper lip and your lower lip meet evenly. And it's also very common for the lower lip to come out and be fuller and the upper lip to stop before the lower lip does. So figure out where are the corners of your mouth, where do they meet? You know, what, are that, what is that shape and where do they meet? Okay, so I'm going to show you another trick for doing the mouth, kind of a different route of going. So and it's often easier when you have a smaller piece for that. So sometimes if you're working small, it's easiest to get something out of the way before you actually go through and start working with it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this bottom lip off, and I'm going to set it aside. Mm. All right. Now, it may dry out too much, so I might have to just make a new one. So I've got my upper lip here. All right. Um, it is going to probably be easier for me to put a little bit of my nose shape in, which is simply a matter of putting the shape of the end in and then getting the nose itself into place. I'm not going to worry about the nostrils right now. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. And I'm going to create that outer shape and figure out what that outer shape is. All right. And as far as skin, you may just be blending the upper lids at the muscles in. So and just make sure that you've kind of got that shape pretty much right. And so same thing as last time. Or to make the actual roundness or the fullness of the lips itself, you're going to add little round balls of clay. Okay? Because fat is round and globular. All right. So now I'm going to take and blend those guys in and out. And again, being really, really conscious of that shape where the two meet. Your battery's low. Yeah, I'll do that one. All right, and then while this is clear, I can go through and cut that upper shape. So without having that bottom lip there, that made that a lot easier for me to get this shape right. Okay? I think I need a little tiny bit more right here. Get that pair of feet thing right. Okay. And then as a trick, you can put your bottom lip in by taking and rolling up a thicker section almost like applying a little cigar underneath there, okay? So I want to make sure that it's going to be wet and smooth. And again, you can dip your finger in water or you can spit on it. So once you've got that right, you know, I've kind of pushed it into place, and now to make the shape of the bottom you remember when I was talking about the shadow, see how I'm making a shadow underneath it? Okay. Sneaky, tricky. Sometimes you'll still need to put like a little bit in here or there, but it is definitely a shortcut to getting that shape right. Okay. And then think about the corners of the lips and how the corners of the lips meet. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. All right, so obviously I'd need to do a lot of refining to get this exactly the way I want it, but I've got it fairly close. Okay? Yeah. 